Howdy, howdy. What? When I see some long untouched junk foods on the grocery shelves, I often ask myself, how do these still exist? I've never known anyone who actually buys these. Sometimes these junk foods are reviled but have very small community followings that keep them barely scraping by. But by many people, they're often despised. So let's check them out today. These are what I consider the 10 most hated junk foods. And if you do like these junk foods, please don't take my criticizing to heart. It's just my silly personal opinion, and I'm only criticizing the junk foods and certainly not you for liking them. Many of these have small followings and Taste is something that varies from person to person. These are just what I personally found in my research to be very rarely liked. Anyway, let's begin. <laughs> just kidding. Number 11 today. The Swedish Fish Oreo. Oreo knew that the words fish and Oreo had no business being in the same sentence. But somehow, we still ended up with an Oreo devoid of its cream filling. Instead, filled with a strange, bright red, phosphorescent fruit punch licorice candy. And social media was in an uproar. Well, I mean, the, in an uproar about most things, but particularly this thing. It's like society just snapped when they realized this flavor actually existed. For example, Jesse Rubin said, Go home, Nabesco. You're drunk. C-Dub considered this Oreo an outright defiance. Gross. How dare they defy Swedish fish? Even when I asked people in my community on Twitter, people like Ramen Retro said, This is the worst Oreo flavor I've ever tasted. Even news articles were in on the lunacy. The Today Show tried them out, and most of the team couldn't even finish a single cookie. Only two of their die-hard Swedish fish fans actually managed to finish them. Business Insider questioned Oreo on their continued descent into madness. And an Oreo spokesperson had this to say. We know that consumers enjoy variety when it comes to snacking. I mean, surely there's a difference between variety and adding Swedish fish anything to your cookies. But how did they actually taste? Well, BuzzFeed gave out some of the cookies to some of their partying friends. I think they were a bit buzzed, no pun intended. And to be fair, some didn't mind the sweet taste. But more sober responses included. No, no. When have you ever put chocolate on a Swedish fish? CNET gave a more detailed, sober review. And this is what they said. I really wanted to like this, but it tastes like crispy fruit medicine puree. Fruit medicine puree? Well, it's definitely not the most appetizing combination I've heard. Overall, while some people could tolerate the taste, most people seemed outraged just realizing they live in a world where the Swedish fish Oreo exists. And coming in at number 10, M&M's mint flavor. About 400 million M&M's are produced each day. And chances are, when someone sees the M&M's bowl passed around, they won't say no to a handful. But if you pass around the mint-flavored M&M's, people are much more likely to say no to that bowl. The only other M&M's that comes even close to the dislike mint gets is pretzel-flavored M&M's. But in the end, according to studies from Mashed, mint was the most hated flavor of all. And given what taste testers say about these, that makes sense to me. For example, on Food Network, Tasters did not like it. One taster was actually scared to try them again. Perhaps the most consistent opinion was this. It tastes like toothpaste. If it's not like real mint, it just tastes like toothpaste. One person said the dark chocolate flavor tasted like an after dinner mint, but not a single taster ever wanted to try these again. Color wise, the mint M&M has a mixed reputation as well. Green is typically the color used to represent <laughs> sickness. Although green is one of my favorite colors, that's forest green. The color on this mint M&M is the deep fluorescent kind. But in one particular way, it appears the green M&Ms do impress. Apparently, the green M&M character has quite a bold reputation. Throughout the years, the green M&M has typically been seen as quite a liberated lady. With her long lashes, pouty lips, and go-go boots, she was likely marketed this way because, well, green M&Ms had a reputation for being an aphrodisiac. In the 1970s, anyway. M&M's even utilize the phrase, is it true what they say about the green ones? But regardless of what consenting adults do with their M&M's behind closed doors, the green mint taste does definitely not impress many people. So it's gotten a reputation as the worst tasting M&M. And for number nine, 
The Banana Split Oreos Oreos are one of the all-time favorite junk foods across America. You've heard it before, twist, lick, dunk. As a teenager, I used to eat them a lot. Personally, I tended to have them without twisting them. Either way, I'm still catching up on the yearly dental fillings. You may know Oreos are no stranger to weird flavors, but which is the absolute worst? After a bit of research, I found that lemon cream and low-fat Oreos had bad reputations too. But across websites, nothing matched the abysmal reputation of the banana split Oreo. Almost unanimously, reviewers called them revolting. Unsurprisingly, they're no longer available. But I do remember trying them about a decade ago, and I remember how the banana cream flavor just lingered. But it's been a long time since I tasted them, so let's see what other people said. All good, we have Amazon reviews. These tend to give quite a variety of opinions. But a lot of people are definitely not sold on this flavor. Raven Miss said, Disgusting! The banana flavor in this is awful! The moment I broke the seal on the bag, the smell was overwhelming. Jason and his family tried them out too. Jason commented, It's a Frankenstein monster of a cookie. In their video review, they also commented that the banana taste was overpowering. It just tastes mostly like banana. The banana flavor is overpowering everything, yes. even the chocolate cookie. So banana. Even their six-year-old daughter gave them a one star. Judith had similar comments. She said, Perfectly awful. They're ruined by an overwhelmingly fake banana flavor. So if you're someone who does miss the banana split Oreo, it appears you are among a rare breed. And for number eight, we have black licorice. Oh, ha ha. There's a fine line between like and hate, and black licorice is one of those snack foods that blurs those lines. Ugh, it, it has a strong pungent and medical smell. And this might be because according to WebMD, actual licorice is thought to decrease coughs and help heal ulcers. And wouldn't you know, some clinical trials in the National Library of Medicine backed up these claims. Unfortunately, many modern licorice candies in the US don't contain actual licorice yet they still maintain that horrible medicine smell. Bummer, I, I just stick with a cough medicine. That medicine taste is unique and can be very polarizing to some people. Ooh. Nope. In fact, researchers found that licorice was the most unpopular candy in all of Halloween among kids. In fact, research found they'd much rather get an apple. And as a fruit fan, that's wonderful to see. Definitely delicious, they call it. But I also know that apples aren't normally that popular around Halloween time, so it doesn't speak wonders for licorice. In case you're curious, Reese's peanut butter cups were kids' favorite Halloween candy. Some people have suggested that the taste for black licorice is genetic, but I don't think so, because it's one of my dad's favorite candies. I get him a pack of licorice every Christmas, and I have no idea how he stands them. He likes liver as well though, so I'll, I'll never understand his taste. Anyway, what do the taste testers say? Well, Good Mythical Morning tried this one out. I do not make a habit of trying to eat this ever. Link on the right seemed pretty grossed out by it, while Rhett on the left actually seemed to like the medicine taste. I know that it's polarizing. I know that it tastes like medicine, but I can't get enough of it. Some of the differing tastes on this one, though, may actually be cultural. For example, on Kiora, Laura mentioned she was Dutch, and licorice is a huge thing over in her country, or drop as they call it. Licorice there is basically a Dutch culinary icon. In fact, Spruce Eats said that licorice is the most loved candy in all of the Netherlands. It's also a big favorite in other countries like Finland, Iceland, and Germany. Americans often can't get a taste for it, though. For example, Tim is German and Dennis is Dutch. Uh, actually, I'm from Sweden. Oh no, I meant another Dennis. Sorry, man. Though you certainly are my favorite Dennis. Anyway, this other Dennis was Dutch, and he handed out Dutch licorice in Times Square to unsuspecting Americans. Their responses were as you'd expect. I hate licorice. It's very salty. So licorice is definitely more appreciated by Northern European cultures. But I've been staving it off long enough. Let's taste test this out. <laughs> Oh, no, ah, it's not actually that bad, actually. It smells terrible, but it's all right. It's a very acquired taste. Just maybe it is genetic. And for number seven, we have Twinkies. You know, for a cream-filled sponge cake, the Twinkie is quite special. 
It's among the most universally well-known junk foods in America. Yet at the same time, many people think it tastes terrible. It's an American icon, yet it's known as superficial and full of garbage. In the 1930s, the Twinkie was quite special. But nowadays, that super sweet, cream-filled taste is just not as well-loved. For example, in this snack cake taste-off, they found that many modern kids didn't like the taste of Twinkies at all. A few parents liked the nostalgia, but upon tasting them, many couldn't believe they actually enjoyed the taste of Twinkies as kids. And throughout the years, the poor old Twinkie has certainly had its ups and downs. It's been scorned for its high sugar content, high fat content, and empty calories. But it's also been disdained for its preservatives. Not that I have anything against preservatives myself, but Twinkies really are preserved shockingly well. For example, a science teacher named Roger at George Stevens Academy conducted an experiment. He found that when he left a Twinkie in its wrapper on top of his chalkboard for 30 years, it was still okay. It was a little faded and dried out, but it otherwise had no signs of decline. In his words, he said, It's rather brittle, but if you dusted it off, it's probably still edible. But regardless of its shelf life, the Twinkie remains a popular but derisive favorite. Apparently it even made it into the Millennium Time Capsule. The way it's looking, it may remain edible for the 100 trillion years till the heat death of the universe. At this rate, they may even outlast the black holes, I don't know. Anyway, a lot of scrutiny for the Twinkies started in the 90s, when healthy eating got more popular. During this time, the Twinkie sales plummeted. By 2012, the creators of Twinkies Hostess had gone into bankruptcy for the second time. Perhaps the recession played a role, but staff also striked due to poor working conditions. However, the memory of the Twinkie was not forgotten. Apparently, when Hostess filed for bankruptcy and announced the death of the Twinkie. Many people were very upset. Where's the Twinkie? News stories told of people rushing to get the last of the Twinkies. Kind of like Black Friday, except mediocre snack cake Friday instead. But lucky for some, two businessmen believed in the nostalgia and came in to save the life of the Twinkie. This is Andy. Andy said with the already established popularity and brand awareness of Twinkies, he could turn the ship around. So together, Andy and his buddy Dean bought the Hostess company and rebuilt the Hostess brand. Staff conditions were improved and the Twinkie was brought back. This time for sure. Some groaned and said, "Ugh, these things again. Others were glad. Number 6. British and American Smarties Regardless of the country, Smarties appear to be a unanimous disappointment to society. British ones are mediocre chocolate buttons, while American ones look like cough drops and taste like chalk. To this day, it puzzles me how either Smarties brand can continue to exist. According to a large 2022 opinion poll from the candy store company, Smarties ranked among the most hated candies. And if that includes the British ones, I can't really disagree. Lisa Ronan it literally says, I'm paper. It's being very transparent about the taste of these things. The older I got, the more I thought British Smarties were kind of a bummer. While M&Ms give a multitude of different flavors and textures, depending on what type you choose, Smarties gave one flavor. Mediocre, waxy tasting chocolate. To me, the Smartie used to taste like pure disappointment. And unfortunately, Smarties are readily available in my country, so I reluctantly picked this one up. Honestly, I don't tend to eat much chocolate, but I'll try one or two and let you know what the taste is. I gotta point out how terrible do these look compared to M&Ms? They just look bland and dried out. All right, let's see. Oh, just as disappointing as I remember. It's all right. Uh, it's, it's okay, chocolate, but I'd much rather be eating an M&M. Oh, and it has this odd kind of wheaty, sugary aftertaste, which I've never really liked. And I don't even know how to describe the dreadful throat lozenge dump that is American Smarties. We'll have a braver taste tester than I describe them. The taste tester AJ tried both types of Smarties. He described the American Smartie as chalk, tart, and gross. He said the British Smartie tasted better, but I feel like this is comparing a football in the groin to a slap in the face. Neither is preferable, but I'll definitely take the slap in the face first. Let's see what an American comparing Smarties to M&M's thinks. Magenta and her son also tried the British Smarties. The first thing they commented was the same thing I did. How much more colorful the M&M's look compared to the Smarties. For some reason, the Smarties just have a more plain pastel color. To be fair, that could be because they do boast that they've got no artificial colors and flavors on there. As for the taste? Mmm, those taste different. I'm trying to tell like how these taste different. 
I do not like the Smarties. Magenta gave the Smarties a thumbs down, and they both commented that they're too sweet, brittle, and not chocolatey enough. This could have to do with the inclusion of wheat flour in Smarties, which M&Ms don't have at all. I should point out though, when it comes to who came first, Smarties take the title. They were first made in 1937, a few years before M&Ms in 1941. So Smarties can certainly take credit for bringing chocolate buttons to society first. But how they both stayed in business when M&Ms hit the scene, that I don't know. Either way, if I want a mini snack, I think I'll stick with the grapes, thanks. And what do we got at number five? Fry's Turkish Delight. Shut up and take my money. No, 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 the other Fry. This Fry was a chocolatier from 1847, though his chocolate bar is owned by Cadbury now. This ancient chocolate bar is liked by a select few, but a lot of people just can't stand it. In fact, the website The Sun rated it the absolute worst chocolate bar. Which is harsh, but many people are confused by the taste. It's got a weird jelly flavor and texture in the middle, topped by this confusing chocolate aftertaste. This confusion among consumers is probably because Turkish Delight itself dates way back to 1777, 246 years ago in Turkey. And even today, it is Turkey's most beloved sweet. But surprisingly, taste can change in 246 years. And putting wheat starch in your chocolate, that just doesn't necessarily necessarily appeal to the rest of the world like it used to. For a dedicated few, and of course the country of Turkey, they love that unusual taste. And from what I remember, there is something quite unique about that Turkish Delight texture, but many appear to see Turkish Delight as a relic from the 17th century. How does it taste though? I was able to pick this one up in Australia, so let's give it a taste. The jelly center just kind of puts me off. The taste itself is perfectly fine. I don't mind the texture, but it is very unusual and I can see why some people might be put off by it. Overall, I'd probably just have a regular chocolate over one of these. But how do American tasters rate it? Laura and John tried it, but neither seemed to like it very much. At all, I don't like it. Laura said she'd finish it, but she didn't like the inside texture. It's not horrible for me, I can finish that, no problem. I'd agree, I like the taste, but I think that strange jelly texture just seems to throw off a lot of Americans. So good on you, Turkey. You continue to enjoy the Turkish delight, the rest of us will continue to be confused by it. Number four. Pringles, Applewood, Smoked Cheddar. Now, Pringles has had some bad flavors before. White chocolate peppermint, rotisserie chicken, the Baconator, but nothing matched the supreme level of awful that is Applewood Smoked Cheddar. People just couldn't stand this flavor. I'm not impressed. Some time ago, Good Mythical Morning rated every single Pringles flavor, and they were mostly pretty positive about them. Ooh, I'm working my way up to 100. I gotta give that a 85. But then they got to this one. Applewood smoked cheddar. Ooh! Ooh! Whoa! 17, that's the worst chip of the ah, five! They labeled this the worst potato chip they have ever tasted. And those guys have tasted a lot of junk food. Needless to say, I was intrigued. And on further research, I discovered unanimously, whatever reaction I looked at, taste testers reacted the same. Each person that bit into the chip was left with that same sour, disapproving look on their face. It's like every single person who ate it had suddenly been slapped with a wet fish. The foulness of combining apple and smoked cheese was truly unmatched. Even the Pringles website, the website meant to advertise these products, couldn't contain the bad reviews of this thing. Some of the more favorable reviews included Mari. She said, I didn't expect them to taste like really bad cheese. Maybe Lulu was more happy with the taste. What did she say? These are the worst flavored chips I've ever eaten. I will normally eat any other chip without complaint, but these are just terrible. I bet Yum has a taste for good chips. There have you read. They should be banned. They are the most disgusting thing I've ever put in my mouth. Pringles used to have the phrase, once you pop, you can't stop. But with Applewood smoked cheddar, once you pop, you apparently stop immediately. And coming in at number three, candy corn. There's no junk food I'm more confused by the existence of than candy corn. It's a staple of Halloween, but why is it a staple? As far as I could see, very few people like them, and many people hate them. In fact, it's practically a cliche how much candy corn is hated. Yet, for some reason, adults still buy them on Halloween. Perhaps to scare off the children? I guess that's possible. Candy corn's so notorious, it's even made fun of in cartoons. Ooh, candy corn. Spew! Hey, 
They're better than the corns on my feet. In fact, recently, the biggest manufacturer of candy corn was hacked right before Halloween. Some people are that desperate to stop this stuff from being made. I'm serious. Personally, I'd never hack anyone, but it does show how much people despise this candy. Mary Wright is a food flavor specialist that did some research on candy corn, and she had this to say about it. It's a very emotional candy. There are two factors that seem to spur its strong emotional response. It's waxy yet crumbly texture, and it's super sweet taste. I'd agree. Personally, I noticed texture a lot and it used to be that waxy texture that upset me. Mercifully, I could not find any candy corn in Australian stores, so I was spared from testing this one. But what do other taste testers say? Well, Nickelodeon had some of their sitcom actors do a taste test. They weren't even able to give much feedback beyond the candy corn tasted weird or wrong before spitting it up. Oh, uh-oh. This is not... Taste nope. how it looks. Oh, this person gave a bit of feedback. That's really gross. <laughs> oh no! Well, that tastes like medicine. Given most of these taste testers were younger Gen Z people, I got the impression that candy corn was mostly appreciated by a older, nostalgic audience. I was more certain of this when I saw Good Mythical Morning try them too. Because like me, they're a bit older, but they also quite enjoyed the candy corn. Candy corn is not bad. It tastes like hardened cake icing. That's not bad. Neither loved it, but at least they kept it down. I also saw some older consumers review candy corn on Facebook, and they seem quite fond of them too. For example, Old Town Albie asked their commenters about candy corn. Their comments included, I love candy corn. It's so good with peanuts. Pass me the bowl. Though there were certainly still some comments <laughs> where the vomit emoji was included. So candy corn may be hated by many, particularly younger generations, but some adults still find them an okay Halloween treat. And for number two we have the Bounty Chocolate Bar. Ah, Bounty, the bringer of disappointment and apparently a national cause of division. Oh, come on, really? Oh, apparently that's what Mars says. You see, Mars recently removed all their bounty bars from their celebration chocolate boxes. Why? Because they found in a British survey that nearly 40% of their customers hate them and want them gone forever. In case you're not familiar with these, to make a bounty bar, you take a perfectly good chocolate and then you fill it with dry shards of coconut. Ugh. Why would they put coconut in a chocolate bar? I have been pondering that since I first tasted the horrible thing decades ago. From Lamingtons to Bounty Bars, I have never felt that dried coconut tastes good on anything. Every time I ate one of these Bounty Bars, I would feel annoying little bits of dried coconut stuck in my throat. It was horrible. It had deadened the taste of otherwise decent chocolate and just irritate my throat. And apparently, I'm not alone in my annoyance. According to Mars themselves, 30% of their customers believe that coconut has no place in a chocolate bar. So how does this chocolate bar manage to be bad enough to apparently cause division and arguments? Well, in a Mars celebration box, you get a bunch of different chocolates like Snickers, Dove, Mars Bars, Maltesers, all those decadent little treats. And until recently, bounties. But apparently, at some parties, people will eat all the chocolates in there except the bounties. So I guess some friends get annoyed at being left with nothing but bounty chocolates. To me, that sounds more like a problem with inconsiderate friends, but bounties' existence certainly doesn't help the problem. Mars did find they still had 18% of customers who did genuinely like bounty bars, but this is by far Mars Mars's most divisive chocolate. In fact, 42% of Mars's customers had admitted arguing with their friends because of only bounty bars being left over. Oh, come on, really? It's freaking chocolate. I can't believe I need to say this, but to whoever's having these arguments with their friends, chocolate is not worth having an argument with someone you care about. I think anyone who's that annoyed should, you know, take a walk, get some fresh air, walk down to the corner store, and if it's such a big deal, buy another chocolate bar there. But chocolate is not worth saying something you can't take back to someone you care about. But let's hear a product review directly from a consumer. Matt said, Wow, what a terrible chocolate. On a hot but stormy summer afternoon, I came home and found the family favourites had been opened. I happily opened the box, only to find nothing but bounties left. Needless to say, I am now depressed. No one should have to endure what I have. I have contacted the news and they are investigating further. Come on, Matt. Look, look, here's 20 bucks. 
toss the bounties in the bin, walk down to the store, buy some more chocolates, enjoy yourselves. Of all the madness going on in the world right now, I, I just don't think bounty chocolates are worth being depressed over. That would be a hilarious news article though. Anyway, taste test time. Let's try this bounty bar out. Is it as bad as I remember? Honestly, the chocolate overrides most of the uh, coconut flavor, but it's still a bit of a bummer. I'd rather just be eating the chocolate. Ugh, that's more than enough for me. And my number one most hated junk food is... Generic brand Easter eggs. Oh, it still has an awful smell. You know, chocolate is one of those foods that is near impossible to screw up. Brand name Easter eggs like Cadbury or Lindt have a reputation for being tasty. But Easter eggs have the potential to taste so harrowingly awful that no other chocolate can match its sickening taste. These generic eggs can literally make you want to gag, so I brought the gag bucket just in case. Back in the 90s, my family didn't have much money when we were growing up, so we'd often stumble upon these generic brand Easter eggs. But all of us thought twice about getting them once we tasted them. Now, normally a child's taste buds are less developed than an adult's, so they won't necessarily notice nuance in a taste. As long as it has sugar in it, they're generally fine. That's part of why us adults try to watch what kids are eating. They can't necessarily tell that their honey smacks are 50% sugar. But these Easter eggs were the exception to that rule. Even as a child, I couldn't even swallow one without gagging and having to spit them in the bin. Needless to say, I couldn't find taste tests for generic 90s Easter eggs. So I scoured through the cheap dollar stores to seek these out. I thought surely in 2023, surely these generic horrible tasting Easter eggs could couldn't still exist, but lo and behold, they're in the first store I found. Now, due to my classical conditioning of a child of vomiting up on these, every part of my brain is telling me not to eat this. And I feel slightly nauseous just smelling and looking at them. You may also find this reaction if you look or think about a food you've vomited up before. Evolution-wise, this is how we avoided poisoning ourselves as a species. All right, here we go. I remind you, this is meant to be chocolate. Oh god, oh, oh, how, how do you make chocolate taste that bad? Let's do a comparison piece with a regular old Cadbury egg, just, just to see how it tastes by comparison. So much better. Chocolate should taste good. If you're gonna down something that's 500 calories per 100 grams, it should be worth it. If you ever, ever see these mini eggs, I implore you to stay away from them. And for the love of Pete, don't give them to children. They deserve better. These generic Easter eggs are the absolute worst junk food I have ever tried to this day. And if you think I missed a particularly disliked junk food, or you have your own opinion on these foods, feel free to let me know about them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Sweet Wolf Steve. They ask, do you and your wife plan on having kids in the future? Nin and I are actually both the same in that we both want child-free lives. There's a bit of pressure to have children in our society, but Nin and I mainly just don't want the stress of it, the financial obligation, or the commitment. I want my focus to remain on the family I already have. And that includes Nin, her cat, and of course, my channel's community. 